Hello friends, today we are going to learn about inflation and unemployment. In this lecture, the objective is to understand the meaning of inflation, to know the causes of inflation, to understand the meaning of unemployment, to know the types of unemployment. Let us start with the topic of inflation. What is inflation? Inflation is a very common problem that is affecting most countries of the world today. Developed as well as developing countries suffer from inflation. There are many causes of inflation and they also differ from country to country. Each country devises a set of measures to fight inflation. In the current scenario, inflationary tendencies are growing steadily in India, causing the cost of living to rise. Middle class and poor people suffer the most due to inflation. Hence, we define inflation as a journal rise in prices. Theoretically, inflation is a persistent rise in the journal price level rather than a once for all rise in it. Now, let us learn about various causes of inflation. Depending upon the specific causes, four types of inflation have been distinguished. First, demand pull inflation. Second, excessive growth in money supply that is monetarist theory of inflation. Third, cost push inflation and fourth is structural inflation. But it is important to note that an important cause of inflation is the excessive growth of money supply in the economy. Now we will learn about demand pull inflation. Demand pull inflation where the basic factor at work is the increase in aggregate demand for output either from the government or the entrepreneurs or the households. The result is that the pressure of demand is such that it cannot be met by the currently available supply of output. Keynes explained that inflation arises when there occurs an inflationary gap which is caused by a situation whereby the pressure of aggregate demand for goods and services exceeds the available supply of output. In such a situation, the rise in price level is a natural occurrence. The ordinary functioning of an economy should result in distributing and spending income in such a manner that aggregate demand for output is equivalent to the cost of producing total output including profits and taxes. The aggregate demand increases when all the three sectors that is government, the entrepreneur and the households try to secure a larger part of output, then there will be a demand pull in the economy. Thus, other sectors as well try to secure as much as they can from the share of output used any other sector, resulting in creation of multiple demands in all of the sectors together. Thus, there is more demand than the national output produced. When aggregate demand for all purposes that is consumption, investment and government expenditure exceeds the supply of goods at current prices, there is a rise in prices. This can be best explained when the government adopts expansionary fiscal policy under which it increases its expenditure on education, health, etc. This will lead to increase in aggregate demand. If aggregate supply of output does not increase by relatively less amount in the short run, this will cause demand pull inflation in the economy that is general rise in price level from one period to another. If the government is insistent on securing additional resources, it will get them in one way or another by issuing currency or by borrowing the central bank or from commercial banks. If other sectors, particularly the active sectors, are willing to contract their investment or consumption by the amount of these additional resources used by the government, an inflationary process will be initiated. Keynes' notion of inflationary gap represented excess of aggregate demand over full employment output. This inflationary gap, according to him, leads to rise in prices. Thus, Keynes explained inflation in terms of demand pull forces, since beyond full employment level of aggregate supply output cannot increase in demand. This results in rise in prices under the pressure of excess demand. Demand pull inflation can be represented with aggregate demand and aggregate supply curves. Considering the figures in which aggregate demand and aggregate supply are measured along the x-axis, and general rise level along the y-axis, 
curve AS represents aggregate supply which rises upward in the beginning but when full employment level OYF is reached curve AS takes a vertical shape. This is because Keynes believed that after the full employment level AS curve becomes constant and there cannot be any additional supply. Thus below AD3 economy operates at below full employment and at AD3 economy achieves full employment level hence supply curve becomes vertical straight line. In the figure when aggregate demand increases from AD1 to AD2 a journal increase in the price level is observed hence proving that as the demand increases journal price level is pulled up. Let us understand now the excess growth in money supply that is monetarist theory of inflation. The modern monetarist Milton Friedman explains inflation in terms of excess demand for goods and services. The difference between the monetarist view of demand pull inflation and Keynesian view is Keynes explain inflation as arising out of real sector forces. In this model of inflation, excess demand comes into being as a result of autonomous increase in expenditure on investment or consumption. On the other hand, monetarists explain the emergence of excess demand and the resultant rise in prices on account of increase in money supply in the economy. Friedman holds that when money supply is increased in the economy then there emerges an excess supply of real money balances with the public over the demand for money. This disturbs the equilibrium. In order to restore the equilibrium the public will reduce the money balances by increasing money expenditure on goods and services. Thus according to Friedman and other modern quantitative theorists the excess supply of real monetary balances results in the increase in aggregate demand for goods and services. If there is no proportionate increase in output then extra money supply leads to excess demand for goods and services. This causes inflation or rise in prices. The whole argument can be presented in this scheme. When the supply of money that is MS is increased it creates excess supply of real cash balances. P is the price level and KY is demand level. This excess supply of real money balances leads to rise in aggregate demand which further leads to rise in prices. It thus follows that when money supply increases it causes disturbance in the equilibrium. This leads to the increase in aggregate demand or expenditure on goods and services which will lead to the increase in nominal national income. They further argue that the real national income remains stable at full employment level in the long run due to the flexibility of wages. Therefore, according to Friedman and his followers in the long run the increase in nominal national income brought about by the expansion in money supply and resultant increase in aggregate demand will cause a proportional increase in the price level. However, in the short run like the Keynesians they believe that the economy may be working at less than full employment that is in the short run there may prevail excess capacity and unemployment of labor so that expansion in money supply and consequently increase in nominal income partly induces expansion in real income and partly results in the price level as shown in the figure. To what extent price level increases depends upon the elasticity of supply or aggregate output. It is noticed from the figure that effect of increase in money supply from M0 to M1 and resultant increase in AD curve. For goods and services from AD0 to AD1 is split up into the rise in price level from P0 to P1 and the increase in real income or aggregate output that is from Y0 to Y1. It is thus believed that in short run full employment of labor and other resources may not prevail due to recessionary conditions and therefore they admit the possibilities of increase in output. But they emphasize that when the growth in money supply is greater than the growth in output the result is excess demand for goods and services which causes rise in prices on demand pull inflation.
the third cause for inflation is cost push inflation. This type of inflation emanates from changes which arise on the side of supply or cost of production independently of any excess demand in both final goods and factor markets. As the level of unemployment decreases, certain income group may put pressure to seek money income. For instance, producers may seek higher real profit margins and the trade unions may exert pressure for increasing the wage rates. We thus have cost push inflation due to either wage push or profit push. Let us start with wage push. The market power of factor inputs is increased when resources are fully employed. But even in a situation of less than full employment, the fact that the government is committed to full employment may encourage employees organizations, if well organized, to press pay increase claims aggressively. Mostly justifiable on the grounds of a prior rise in productivity or of cost of living, they produce a cost push effect. Since rates of wages are negotiated collectively for an industry, the cost of all firms in the industry rise owing to the increase in wage rates. Other industries also follow suits and therefore costs rise throughout the economy and are regrouped in higher prices. This increase provide additional purchasing power and so the level of aggregate demand increases further. If this happen, we have cost push inflation. It may be noted that as a result of cost push effect of higher wages, aggregate supply curve of output shifts to the left and given the aggregate demand curve, this results in higher price of output. Second is profit push inflation. Besides the increase in wages of labor without any increase in its productivity, there is another factor responsible for cost push inflation. This is the increase in the profit margin by the firms working under monopolistic or oligopolistic conditions and as a result charging higher prices from the consumers. In the former case, when the cause of cost push inflation is the rise in wages, it is called wage push inflation. And in the later case, when the cause of cost push inflation is the rise in profit margins, it is called profit push inflation. The increase in profit margins also produces a cost push effect and results in shift in the aggregate supply curve to the left. Now we'll understand unemployment. Unemployment is yet another major concern of growing economies like India after inflation. It represents the unused labor force within an economy and hence an important resources is wasted due to inability to use it. There are various types of unemployment which are important to be noticed in order to diagnose it correctly. Frictional unemployment. It is always present in the economy resulting from temporary transitions made by workers and employers having inconsistent or incomplete information. This type of unemployment is closely related to structural unemployment due to its dependence on the dynamics of the economy. This type of unemployment is also caused by failing firms, poor job performance or obsolete skills. Frictional unemployment can be seen as a transaction cost of trying to find a new job. For instance, a case of frictional unemployment would be a college student quitting their fast food restaurant job to get ready to find a job in their field after graduation. Unlike structural unemployment, this process would not be long due to skills the fresh college graduate has to offer a potential firm. Second is seasonal unemployment. It is a working agreement where the worker is employed for a certain part of the year. However, after that time of the year has passed, then the worker is left unemployed. For example, summer tourism jobs beach lifeguards, peasant farmers, furthermore, people who are also construction workers who only work when house buildings jobs are available. 
then comes disguised unemployment. If a person does not contribute anything in the production process or in other words, if he can be removed from the work without affecting the productivity adversely, he will be treated as disguised unemployed. The marginal productivity of such unemployed person is zero. Agriculture sectors of underdeveloped or developing economies possess this type of unemployment at a large scale. Technological unemployment. It is when there is a lack of jobs or when people lose their jobs due to technological changes. People are replaced by capital goods and machinery because sometimes it makes the job easier and also quicker. Furthermore, it also makes the cost of labor and productivity less expensive which would make the firms earn more profit. This could potentially cause deflation because the prices would have fallen due to the increase of supply. Due to the change in technology, the productivity rate has increased but the employment rate is decreasing. Yet another type of unemployment is structural unemployment. It is associated with the mismatch of jobs and workers due to the lack of skills or simply the wrong area desired for work. Structural unemployment depends on the social needs of the economy and dynamic changes in the economy. For instance, advances in technology and changes in market conditions often turn many skills obsolete. This typically increases the unemployment rate. For example, with the rise of computers, many jobs in manual bookkeeping have been replaced by highly efficient software. Workers who find themselves in this situation find that they need to acquire new skills in order to obtain a new job. Lastly, we will learn about cyclical unemployment. Unemployment that is attributed to economic contraction is called cyclical unemployment. The economy has the capacity to create jobs which increases economic growth. Therefore, an expanding economy typically has lower levels of unemployment. On the other hand, according to cyclical unemployment, an economy that is in a recession phases higher levels of unemployment. So friends, today we had a thorough introduction of inflation in which we learnt about causes of inflation that influences various types of inflation like demand pull inflation and cost push inflation. We also learnt about various types of unemployment. Hope you enjoyed.